Well, hello. I really wish I could still be a professional basketball player. I'm a scholar of leadership. I study what makes people leaders, what makes them great leaders, how can we work with great leaders, how can we all become great leaders. How many people in the room want to become a great leader? Let's see. Great. Well, I want to tell you, you all can. And the reason we study history is because history allows us to understand how we can do this. We don't study history, and I'm a historian, obviously, we don't study history because it's about dead people in the past. We study history because it's about people alive today. And that's why I'm here, and that's what I want to talk about today. Let's begin with the most important and probably greatest leader of all time. You know his name, Abraham Lincoln. How many people have heard of Abraham Lincoln, right? OK, good. So the image, the image we have of Abraham Lincoln, the image many of us think of when we think of Abraham Lincoln, is an even taller guy. He'd probably play basketball even better than I would. Someone with a long gray beard. Someone who is a lonely guy, pretty solitary, pretty much on his own most of the time. Someone who thought deep thoughts, but someone who is not your sort of ordinary figure. He's a kind of old man, a grandfatherly figure, long gray beard, long black hat, dark clothes, not a very attractive person. Well, I'm here to tell you that's all wrong. In fact, we've thought about leadership the wrong way. We've thought about Abraham Lincoln the wrong way. There is this movie about him that you might have seen recently. Wonderful movie, Wrong Lincoln. Wonderful movie, Wrong Lincoln. Wrong leader. We have trouble becoming leaders. We have trouble finding leaders. We have trouble defining leaders because we set them up as men of marble. We set them up as old men. And old men are never great leaders. Young people like you are. That's my message today. Leaders are young people historically. They always have been. In fact, Abraham Lincoln was one of those people. He was, in fact, younger than most of his contemporaries who ever became president. You'd never know that looking at him. He was about a decade younger than Thomas Jefferson when he became president, a decade younger than John Adams when he became president, about a decade younger than George Washington as well. He was a young man to become president. And he didn't go to fancy schools. He barely went to school. He didn't have a wealthy family or a famous name or any great connections. He came from rural Kentucky. He was an outsider. He was an outsider who became a great leader. What else about him should we know? Well, he wasn't someone who put together big schemes and then let others do the work. He was a doer himself. He was someone who started work at an early age toward a dream of becoming a lawyer and becoming a politician. And he failed more than he succeeded. He lost many elections, lost many arguments, lost many fights. He was a loser as much as he was a winner. And he was not some intellectual who was smarter than everyone else. He was actually a good old boy. He was someone who people wanted to spend time with. Famous for his storytelling. Famous for his storytelling, for his ability to bring people together. If Abraham Lincoln were with us today, he'd be the person who'd be the popular person on the playground, not the smart person reading by candlelight in the library. He was a social figure. He was a figure who worked hard to bring people together. Abraham Lincoln was a young, radical thinker. He was an organizer. He was a creative person. He was someone who brought new energy to things. He was someone who believed he could make a difference. And my message to you today is that that's the history of leadership we have to take. If you look at any great leader, that's how he or she began. And there are four things, four things I want to talk about that all of you can do, that all of us should do, that we as a society need to do to become great leaders, to make a difference. Maybe not to become Abraham Lincoln's, but to become something close to that. We're not doing that because we're not thinking about it the right way, and it's time we start thinking about it the right way. So everyone ready? First thing you need to do, well, I'm glad, I like the enthusiasm. First thing you need to do, first thing you need to do that Abraham Lincoln did is you need to start, start dreaming 
about the world, not as it is, but as it can be. You need to start imagining new worlds. Think how hard that is today. We are imprisoned by our technology. We are imprisoned by what we see around us that tells us the world has to be this way. That we have to answer email when we answer email. That we have to participate in social media in the way we do. That we have to spend money the way we do. That we have to accept things the way we do. We are surrounded by people who tell us that. They're often called our parents. And they tell us that every single day. But in fact, leadership is about imagining new worlds. Think about that when you think about Abraham Lincoln, right? He wrote so eloquently about this. You know his words. And these words were his dreams, right? He imagined a more perfect union, just as Americans were slaughtering themselves in a civil war. He imagined a government of the people, by the people, for the people, when it was none of those things at the time. And he spoke of human beings becoming better angels of their nature when they were engaged in the most brutal activities that our society has ever seen before or after. He imagined a different world. He imagined a world without slavery when everything he had seen had been a world with slavery. He imagined a world of equality when he was living in a world without equality. He imagined a world of opportunity when most people did not have opportunity. He imagined a world that did not exist, and by virtue of imagining it, he made it come into being. That's what all of you need to do. You imagine more when you're young. You imagine less when you're old. You must build on the imagination you have as young people. You must continue to do that. You must read. That's what literature and the arts are all about. Imagine new worlds. That's the first thing. Second thing you need to do, you need to build things. You need to build things. Leaders are people who make things happen. Leaders are people who bring people together. That was Lincoln as well. He was a figure who got people to talk to one another who hadn't talked before. He was a figure who made people want to spend time together. He was a man who founded a new organization. The first president from that organization is called the Republican Party of the United States. He built organizations where they did not exist before. He built a law firm. He built a party. He built an entire platform by bringing people together. We spend too much time. We give too many high grades to people who destroy rather than those who build. We give value to those who compete, not to those who cooperate. You need to spend time building things. How many of you belong to a club or an organization of some kind, right? You need more clubs. Form your own clubs. Form your own groups. Form your own new organizations. Young people don't do enough of that. We need more of that today. That's what leadership is. That's my second point. Imagine New Worlds was my first. Second point was build things. Build things. My third point is that you have to stay in the game. You have to stay in the game. There are no timeouts in life. You don't get time off. Stay in the game which is to say that when life doesn't go in the directions you want it to go, when you fail, as you inevitably will, maybe 250 times before you graduate, when you fail, as you inevitably will, you need to keep on trying. You need to adapt and adjust. Lincoln ended up in places different from where he started, and you know what? Our society as a whole has ended up in places different from where we started. It's not winning the game that matters, it's staying in the game that matters. One of the most important lessons in life that you can take if you want to be a leader is that it's not early success that defines someone, it's early failures. Think of all the failed generals Lincoln had before he was able to win the Civil War. Think of all the failed platforms. Think of all the failed ideas in his earlier life. It is the failures that define your successes by your ability to stay in the game with those failures and learn. Think about it. The best athletes miss more than they make, right? The best athletes have lost as many games as they have won over their careers. You get where you are by taking your losses, staying in the game, and continuing to play. Too many great leaders stop and decide they just want to make money and decide they just want to live their own lives and decide that it's too hard. You need to stay in the game if you want to be a great leader. And my final point, I've talked about imagining new worlds. I've talked about building things. I've talked about staying in the game. My final point, my most important point, please remember this, is you have to start now. There's no time to waste. 
It doesn't matter how young you are. I have young kids, and I tell them to start now as leaders, except in the household when I tell them to do something else. <laughs> start now. Start now. It's never too early. It's never too early. Life goes too fast. And the lessons you learn when you're young will be the most important ones. The paradox of our world is that everything we study about leaders tells us that their earliest experiences are the most important, but it's usually the earliest experiences we spend less time nurturing as leadership experiences. Start acting as a leader now. Be a leader in your community for recycling, or a leader in your community for environmentalism, or for economic justice, or for political awareness, or for whatever it is that you are passionate about because it is by starting as a leader now that you will imagine more for the future. It is by starting as a leader now who imagines that you'll build things that will help you lead in the future, and it is that starting as a leader now, imagining new things and building things, you will be able to stay in the game in the long run. You are all leaders already. Do more of that work. Do not be afraid to lead. As another great leader in our society said, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. There is no greater strength in our society than the leaders who are young, who have capability, and all you need to do is start now. Imagine new worlds, build things, stay in the game, and start now. Thank you very much.